This video is brought to you by Omaze. All right, this is week number two of maple syrup, syruping, farming, homesteading. This is gonna be Rachel's second time going to collect sap. Uh, I just went over and talked to Rick about the buckets. He said he checked one of them and it does have a good bit in it. But as I said in one of the last videos when we were going through and doing the maple syrup, if I think it's a good day and uh, you know it looks nice outside, the trees probably do too, and they're probably running sap. So we're gonna go up and check the buckets real quick. We're waiting for Rick, very excited. I hope there's a lot. The last time I went, there was only like, beep, mostly ice too, so it was kind of a bummer. I didn't get to see it all like shoo, into the bucket, but I'm very excited because it is a very warm day. Almost out of the winter jacket season. I personally am still gonna be wearing mine probably for like another week, um, but I already know people who have ditched the winter coats, taken the plow off the truck, they are in full spring summer mode, so very exciting. Oh, I think he's coming down. Oh, he's not here? Well, he's he's here. He's probably back by the book. Yeah, there he is. He's, he's blending in. I know his camo. We're boiling, Rick. Wait, we get paid? And sugar gold. It's the best form of payment. The sweetest kind. I think that's more than the first time we did it. Bluebird day. Do you see the lake? There it is, the beautiful speculator. Come on, good tree. All right, we want to take some guesses. My guess is it's going to be more than the first one. Rick, your guess? Four inches. Four inches, Rach, your guess? Um, oh, Rick's always right. Oh, we're doing four inches. I'm gonna go with the last one had like, I'm gonna go with like five or six inches. Let's see. I'm gonna go seven because that's the only other option. Ooh, Ooh I think Rick's right. I think that's probably more like four. That's a good bit though. Yeah. Our winner. Winner, winner. Our winner. Mr. Rick. <laughs> He's got years of experience, it's not fair. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, How many pancakes do you think we're gonna collect today then, Mike? Well, we got we, one, one bucket is one pancake right now, so we're going seven buckets, so we got seven pancakes. I'm going with a super stack. Super stack of pancakes. Rick's thinking big. Today I am under both the expertise of both Rick and Michael, um, because Mike will be heading out, which means Rick and I are gonna be the ones uh, in charge here. Hey, Rick's retired. Okay, so I'm the one in charge Rick's, here. Rick's the winter supervisor. <laughs> so you just gotta listen to his sage advice and words of wisdom and try not to boil it uh, too far and then it catches fire. That's the number one goal. Yeah. Don't spill the sap and don't cause a fire. But I can drink the sap. You can do anything else but spill the sap and catch it on fire. So part two will happen of my training when we get back so I can uh, learn the temperatures for the boiling and what to keep it at in case we get a lot. It's gonna be 50 something tomorrow. So, sap runs when the sap wants to run. Fingers crossed. Now, what about that full? Are we boiling today? Oh yeah, I'll boil this down and put it in the other pot so then it's all ready to go when I leave. And then you guys, I mean, just collect it. Might, if, if it flows like that for four days, you'll end up with this full. We're definitely so gonna be might, boiling, you might Rick. have to boil. It all depends on the weather, though. This run's just going to be picking up yeah. more and more. Warmer. Warmer weather. Trees getting warmed up. Snow melting around. And sugar gold. Fun this next few days. I'm very excited for berry season. Or his mom's canning pots and all of the mason jars. So we will have a nice little candy. And now a message from our sponsor, Omaze. If you guys don't know, Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while helping out charities along the way. Right now, you can enter for a chance to win a 4x4 Mercedes Sprinter. Now, this thing is fully loaded, which means it's going to be a heck of a lot faster than if you ever were trying to build these things yourself. If you're interested, this van is built by Van Smiths out in Colorado, and it is specifically built with their green package, which means it is built with all clean building materials and green building materials, as well as having a full off-grid package. Now, when I say off-grid package, not only do 
do I mean solar systems, but I mean this thing is like a house. It's got a full-size bed and it's got 60 inches of kitchen galley space. I mean, that's like the size of Ivan. So if you're interested in entering for a chance to win this 4x4 Sprinter van, you're also going to be sporting the Micro Works Foundation. Now this foundation is on a mission to close the gap between the stigmas and stereotypes of society, which keeps people and discourages people from going to get the millions of jobs that are out there today. Your donation will help support their scholarship program, which is going to help put people into trade schools where they're going to be able to work smarter and harder. So for your chance to win this 4x4 Sprinter van and support a great cause like the Micro Works Foundation, you guys can go to the link in the description or you can go to omaze.com slash navigation nowhere. Back to maple syrup. So this is what we got. That's what we have from the other boils. So I don't know how far, I'm guessing that's still sap technically. Yeah. It's just like really concentrated sap. And then that will eventually have to boil down on the stove. Or can I boil this down a bit more already now and just keep it low? Let's do a little experiment. Okay. I'll go get our candy thermometer. Okay. We'll put that on your stove inside, okay. bring it up to boil, see how many points above water boils it is. Okay. See where it is between water boils yeah. and syrup. We've got our new sap out here starting to boil down. This is mostly a clear liquid, 98% water, you know, very low sugar content. And then we have our stuff inside, which has been the sap that we've been boiling down over the last week and a half, two weeks or so. And that's almost a finished syrup. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is getting this down to the same state that the other stuff is. But Rick just ran over to his sugar bush to go grab his hydrometers and some of his I don't know, testing tools that he's going to teach us about and actually how to take it from sap and turn it into maple syrup because apparently there's a, a point where it goes from sap to syrup. It's a temperature point. Uh, I don't know much about it just yet, but like I said, Rick's going to teach us. So right now we pretty much have to just wait for this to boil, that to boil, and then we can start. The fun thing is we might even have pancakes by the end of this video. We might have pancakes or waffles or biscuits. I'm not too sure. Uh, we got it boiled down pretty far, so Rick said to get it down to about two inches in the bottom, which it is, and then we'll take it inside and boil it down a bit more for about 20-30 minutes, and uh, that's going to put the sap to about 210 to 211 degrees, which means it's almost syrup, and then when we get a bit more, we'll, we'll boil it all the way up to, I think it was 216, he said, and then we'll, uh, then we'll be able to bottle it. So I have to head out for the weekend because I've got a wedding. Uh, we just kind of finished boiling everything down. We got it all on the stove and the next step is gonna be bottling, but there's still gonna be a run coming this weekend while I'm gone. So as I'm cleaning up all of this stuff at the current moment, uh, Rachel is gonna be taking responsibility of all the sap and everything. And all I gotta do is uh, drive down to a wedding drive back and then see what's left in the bucket. But I know that Rachel said that she wanted to film this section of the video and she not only wanted to take you guys on her first maple syrup adventure by herself, but she also wanted to share with everyone her ducks and uh, kind of a little bit of what she does in the background. So you guys are gonna get to meet all of her ducks and I'll see you guys back after the weekend. Hello YouTube. Welcome to this week's episode on Navigation Nowhere. So with Mike at a wedding right now leaves me in charge of the maple syrup. So Mike left me the truck and has already put all the buckets and stuff in the truck for me. So I'm just gonna head back, check the first bucket and see, you know, what we can expect. So before coming to the bucket, I drove past Rick's house and his truck wasn't in the driveway, which means he is not home, which means I'm doing this solo. <gasps> oh, oh, we've got a little bit. That's hopeful. So, means we got stuff in the next. So actually, as I drove up, uh, I found Rick. <laughs> I was telling them how I stopped at your house and you weren't home. Yep. So I figured you went out back into the woods for a bit, but I found him. So we're gonna go look at the buckets. Not as much. 
So I just got back to Mike's and after collecting all the syrup, so I wanted to show you how much syrup we got. Or I guess sap. It's not syrup yet. There we go. All that sap collected today. Tonight and tomorrow is supposed to rain all day. Um, so I'll trudge out tomorrow and see what we have. Um, but at this point, I don't think Rick and I are going to boil until after Michael gets back, just because one, uh, he loves to boil and be a part of that process. But um, two, with the rain being here all day, we're not going to want to sit outside and boil. That would bring us to Sunday, and by that time, we might as well wait another day for Michael to get back. So I'm going to clean all this up, put it all the way, get it ready for tomorrow, and then we are going to go stop in at my ducks, check in on them, see how they're doing. So let's go. So before I do anything with the ducks outside, I first have to prepare them their treat. And I think it might be shocking uh, to see what their favorite thing to eat is. The next part of my quest is the most difficult part. Um, finding the ducks. They, I love that they're free range means that they can be ducks. I hate that they're free range, because it means it never know where they are. <whistles> and it's time for their afternoon nap, which means no one's gonna answer me. Oh, did I get lucky? Oh, look at them. All my ducks in a row. Hey friends. So let me introduce. This is Merv. We all know her. She was one of the first ducks I got. Hey Merv. Good girl. This is Eile. She's one of my friend's ducks that I take him in. That's Reggie. And that's Remy. They're siblings. Remy gives me most of my eggs. And I started raising Reggie and then I gave him to a friend and then she gave him back because she moved. <gasps> no, that's Merv. Hi Merv. This is the one we all know and love as Merv. So I didn't see you over there girl. Which links that Ike. And then these two right here, they're the only two ducklings I ordered off the internet. The black one is Seymour and the gray one is Louie. They're very pretty ducks. So these are the homies, all the homies. Want some peas? Come on, ducks! I have peas! Ah, oh, here they come. Oh, hey! Girl! Here you go, Merv. I'm really zoomed in. Woo! There we are. So now that they are all fed and happy. I go into, oh it's muddy in here, the coop and see if they left me any eggs. All right, someone made a beautiful nest but left no eggs in it. There, yeah, you kind of can. Someone made a beautiful nest intending to lay but never did. Gotta look in all their hiding spots though. Oh, nice. Eggs. What do we got here? This looks like Remy, or actually this looks like a Peking. This might be an Ike's, Ike's little set, because Merv laid for me this morning. I didn't film it, but she laid. So because they are free range, I give them run of the land. Um, of course, I try to keep them within, you know, some sort of barriers and are consistently calling ba them back and things like that, keeping them full of food and water and things does mean that they lay their eggs outside though. And I know a few of their nests, but I'm gonna check a few of them out to see if we got any eggs, cause I'm missing a black Seymour egg. So yeah, let's go find it. This is where, ah, uh, it's empty. That's where she normally lays. Huh. So ducks like to hide their eggs in nests and little crevices, so they'd use as a different example, right under this tree, this is an area I'm definitely going to be keeping a watch on for eggs in the spring. Um, it's tucked away 
and kind of hidden, but still easy enough access. There's, there's their pen, there's the house. So it's still easy enough access for them to come back and forth to look at their eggs, make sure they're okay, but they're sussing me out. They're wondering what I'm doing back in the woods. If you just show me where your eggs are, I won't have to go up in all your business. This is what a Seymour egg is. It's a little black, little black egg. She lays my smallest eggs, because she's my smallest ducky. And I keep all my eggs in a nice little egg basket. So now they're basically good until this evening when I lock them up. Um, I just sit and watch them because I think they're funny. So, if you'd like to watch them with me, here you are. <laughs> what I just did that little hurry, hurry. That's my favorite thing that the ducks do. I don't know what it means or what it is. I've looked it up a bunch of times trying to figure it out. No idea. But it is my favorite thing that they do. All right, I'm back from the wedding. I have all of the supplies ready so we can start boiling and getting ourselves towards that syrup stage. Uh, at this point in filming, I have not looked at any of the footage that Rachel filmed, so I hope hanging out with her ducks was a lot of fun. I'm sure she did a great job filming. I'm excited to get through that footage. But at this point, I've got all the stuff here and we're ready to go, so it's gonna be time to start boiling. So today's a really special day for two reasons. One, we're filming this video. Well, actually three reasons. One, we're filming this video. Two, we're gonna bottle the syrup today that we've been collecting all season so if you guys didn't watch part one of this video you can go check that out that's when we actually collected the sap uh, now we're on to the boiling and bottling stage but this bottle right here it's actually even more special because today of me filming this uh, I'm officially an uncle my brother and his wife just had their baby and today's bottling day so what Rick was telling me is that we can bottle this um, we're gonna do something like hot bottling he was telling me I'm not, I'm not too sure that might be a normal way of doing it but essentially this bottle will be able to last for a really long time in a uh, non-sunlit area. So I'm gonna give this to Finn, who's now my nephew, and this is gonna be the bottle that was bottled on the day he was born. So Finn, uh, in many years when you watch this video out on the internet, this is the day that we bottled this and uh, happened to be today. Uh, Rick just ran over to his house to get the hydrometer, a bunch of other things. Um, I've got the sap pretty much boiled down. Rick told me to stop drinking it because we won't end up with any syrup by the end of this. Uh, but it tastes so good and the house smells so good. We've got quite a few different bottles here right now. We've got this one, which is kind of more of like a pour bottle that you would keep in a house. Uh, this is gonna be mine. I'm gonna fill this up for me for the summer. And then I've got these little bottles right here that we're gonna fill uh, that Rick gave me. We've got a little eight ounce bottle. And then we've got this larger tin, which was one that Rick said his family used uh, back in the day, this is just New York absolute pure maple syrup, just a little tin can. So um, I don't honestly know we're gonna be able to fill all these bottles. I don't know how much we're gonna end up with, but I'm gonna keep drinking this actually. All right, this pot is boiling water. That's gonna be used to sterilize the containers. And then this pot is our boiling sap, which is soon to be syrup. And we'll put it in there. Uh, right here is syrup, water boils, and then you got cream, hard sugar, and cakes. And I was pretty close to heading towards cream. Okay, you see the top red line right there? Yep. That's syrup. Okay. So, ooh. <laughs> you are heavy. Officially. That is... One, two, three, four. So it's like three points heavy. Now, you need to make a decision. That's, that's heavy syrup. Thicker, much thicker than what it needs to be. See the black line below the, that red line? The black line, Ooh, I didn't yep. the microphone, sorry. That's all right. Hit, uh, the black line yep. right there. So yep. that black line below the red line. Yep. At the temperature that that's at now, that's where this should be floating. Okay. So the higher it pops up, the heavier it is. 
further it sinks down, the thinner it is. Yep. Now you can you could either add a little water to this to dilute it, which I don't. If we had some raw sap, we do. You have some raw sap? It's in the buckets. I just didn't collect it yet. What do you want to do? I want to go collect it. Go collect it. Okay. We got a really cold morning for the end of maple syrup season. It's like nine degrees outside, but uh, as you saw, Rick was just testing out the gravity or specific gravity of the syrup, and he asked me to run back out. We still have the buckets uh, hung. There's about two inches of frozen sap inside of them, so we're gonna grab this bucket, melt that down, and then apparently we're gonna take a little bit of that sap and then dilute it back into the syrup that we have to try to get that specific gravity to where Rick wants it to be. Yeah, apparently what he was explaining to me was you can always make it you know, a little bit thicker, or you can always make it thinner by adding a little bit of sap, uh, but it's a heck of a lot harder to make it thicker. So um, we have it thick, now we wanna thin it out a little bit and then we should be good to go to bottle. Frozen chunk. <laughs> We've got our raw, our raw sap that's just been melted from the ice, and then we've got our a little bit too heavy syrup right there. It's three lines below the syrup line. Mm -hmm. It was way above. Mm -hmm. I just put oh through that in, so it's oh. So now we would bring it back up to that line, test it again. Yeah, we're gonna come just above the syrup line. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember where it was when we tested it, and it was mm -hmm. way too thick. So. I can get it very close with the thermometer. All right, Rick, round two, where are we at? We are light again. Oh, so that means we want to boil it a little, a little more. more. Yep. Okay. You're right about on the red line. Oh, come on, camera focus. It's right on the red line. What we want is one, we want the dark line right below the red line. That, that would be specific gravity for maple syrup. All right. Quality of seal maple syrup. You say it now. So no spill any of that. I was going to go. But just let it. Uh... Yeah, just pour it in. All right. Let it go through the. I was filter. very anxious. Now you see why you said, good boy, go get the parsage. <laughs> good. Good. Good, good boy. boy. Good boy. It's okay. Good we boy. got this. What a good boy. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Come on, dump it in there. You said not too fast though. Well, just don't go over the top of the pot. Ay, ay, ay. If I spill some, I'm in trouble. If I don't, I'm in trouble. I don't know what to do. This is liquid gold here, guys. All right, now now we just wait, right? Yep. Okay. Have you got a, some ca uh, aluminum foil? Okay. Keep the heat in that. Come on, Mike. Hurry I'm, up. I'm going, I'm going. Oh, it's cooling down. You gotta hurry it up. I think he's making half this stuff up. He is. You got this good? Perfect. <laughs> Say that again? Niter is poisonous. The <laughs> niter is what you filter out of the pure maple syrup. The reason that this syrup absolutely tastes tremendous and has this phenomenal color, it, it, I, I, wish, I wish we had like smell-a-vision, taste-a-vision here, but um, this was a lot of work to get this little bit of syrup. So, you know, when you, when you guys out there see the maple syrup on the shelf, you know, the cornstarch stuff, that's made with chemicals. This is made by, by, by hand and it's 100% pure. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into this, a lot of energy that goes into this. But the reason that this syrup is in such great condition is because of this man. Right? <laughs> when, you go to a, when you go to a local sugar maker and he asks for $45 for a gallon of maple syrup, you're getting a bargain, trust me.
the work that goes into this is you will not see all the work that went into this on this tape this yeah. video it's a tremendous amount of now now michael michael used propane to heat this uh sap to make the syrup and, and how much propane did you use? How, first a, half, of how many, a half of a 20 pound tank I how used. Many, how many gallons of sap did you ultimately end up getting? I think we only got about 20, honestly. Tw yes. 20 gallons 20. of sap out yeah. of seven buckets from four trees. If you figure... No, it'd be like four, I think we had four runs of think, good... Think of a 30 gallon barrel. You take a 30 gallon barrel, it's about this big around, stands this tall. If you took that of sap, and you boil it down and you make 29 gallons of steam go into the air, you end up with one gallon of syrup. One uh, gallon of syrup. How many cords of wood? Uh, 18, 20, 25 cords. Now, now full, what? full cords. Yeah. Full. Those aren't face cords. Those are four foot by four yeah. foot by eight foot. Four foot by four foot by eight foot. By eight foot. And who gave you the wood? <laughs> I went in the woods and and ask the trees to give up their wood to make so, the syrup. So, you, so, you, so you not only cut the trees, yes. you skidded the trees. Skidded the trees, blocked you, the trees, you, split the trees, stacked the split in the woodshed, and... And yeah. then, and then Still fed, and then fed... Fed it, and then you gotta take the ashes out. By the time you're done, you handle one stick of wood about seven or eight times. <laughs> Before you're done with that one stick of freaking firewood that you throw it. <laughs> so, so once again, when you pay $45 for a gallon of maple syrup, it's please appreciate. Cheap. It's yep. cheap. Try it one time and you will see. Do not waste it on a child. <laughs> <laughs> they pour it over everything. Do not waste it on kids. Give the kids the stuff that you buy in the grocery store. This stuff you save for the adults. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you put it in your whiskey too. It goes great with whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't have a gallon. <laughs> well, it's the end of maple syrup season for us at least. I'm gonna, I was talking to Rick. I've decided I'm gonna pull my taps. I got seven taps up on the hill. Um, I have enough syrup to share with my friends for the summer. It was my first year doing this. I'm really happy with it. And uh, one thing that Rick always tells me is you never want to upset the Adirondack gods. And uh, I'm not going to try to go after another like couple gallons of sap just to boil it down to like a quart. Um, we we've had a great season. We've had a lot of fun. Rick's been able to share those with me and also share it with all of you. So uh, we're going to pull the taps tomorrow and uh, just be happy with what we got. And we'll just start it back up next season. But the best part is, last day maple se season for me, <laughs> the snow decided to show up and now it's just snowing. Yeah. And thank you to Omaze for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to check out the link in the description, you can find out how you can win a brand new Sprinter van.